I'd like to call to order the Town of McCandless February 10th, 2020 meeting. We have the invocation by and Pledge of Allegiance by Council Member Angela Woods. We give sincere thanks for this opportunity to meet together and for the opportunity to serve our neighbors. May we listen to one another intently with the purpose of working together and bettering our community. May we humbly accept the responsibilities assigned to us. May we carry out each of these responsibilities to the best of our capabilities. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Announcements. Um, one of the favorite things uh, for me to do, and I think for the members um, of council, is to recognize outstanding citizens. So tonight we have, um, we're going to recognize one of these special people. In the course of a regular work day, this gentleman came upon a person having a medical emergency. Establishing him pulseless, he administered CPR. Could I please have Brian Johnson, who is the Director of Safety and Security from, of CCAC, to uh, please step to the microphone, as well as Michael uh, Brindle. One more announcement. <clears throat> the only thing almost as much fun as um, get, giving out awards is receiving awards. So I'm pleased to announce that the, that the town of McCandless has been chosen again as a banner community. Municipalities earn this designation by distinguishing themselves as model communities through a commitment to professional <coughs> development, intergovernmental cooperation, sound physical management, and practicing communications to engage community stakeholders. The town will receive this award March 6th at the ALAM luncheon. All right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as submitted to every, um, to each member of council from the reconvened meeting of January the 22nd, 2020 and, and the council's meeting that same night, January 27th, 2020. So moved. Second. 
There's been a motion, a second. Are there any changes or amendments to the minutes? Any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting the minutes indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are adopted. Uh, reports of committees, finance and personnel committee. Presentation by McCallan Square developer, Kevin Doherty of Adventure Champion Development pertaining to a request for tax abatement to support new construction and economic development in a deteriorated area within the town in accordance with local economic revitalization tax assistance, LERTA legislation. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kevin Doherty. Um, I am pleased to be here and thank you for the opportunity to uh, have a conversation about an idea that uh, uh, I hope that you'll think is, is worth considering. Um, tonight we wanted to talk about the property located along Blazier Drive. Uh, Blazier Drive has, as you well know, has, has been in a deteriorated deteriorated position for quite some time and um, uh, we got involved about two years ago and uh, with me tonight I have Barry Ford from Continental Development and Kevin McKeegan uh, from Meyer Unkovic and Scott in case any questions come up that I can't answer um, uh, what we've done on this board uh, I'm not sure everybody can see it but uh, we've got eight pieces of property along the Blazier Drive area marked out in red. We've got their lot and block numbers, current value, valuation by the county, and uh, current taxes that are being paid on those properties currently. So uh, I'm not sure how familiar everybody is with LERDA, but LERDA stands for Local Economic Revitalization Tax Act. It was a piece of legislation Pennsylvania put in place 40 plus years ago. And uh, in this case tonight, what we wanted to do was talk about um, having the school district and the town of McCandless and Allegheny County work together with us and the other property owners we have control of three of the eight pieces of property, but the other five properties <coughs> that sort of surround us are also in pretty dire condition uh, or have been underdeveloped at this point. So we wanted to throw out the idea of working together to come up with a cohesive plan. Today, Barry's group, Continental Development, has come through the process and, and gotten their final plan approval for senior living, uh, assisted living, and independent living facility. Uh, the rest of the plan has not been submitted. It's been through the concept plan status, but it hasn't been through an actual plan or specifics, particularly our company is gonna develop the retail portion. And then we have a third piece uh, that we call the flex piece that we're not sure what's gonna end up there just yet. So, um, and then adjoining us to the West would be the former Showcase Cinema site, um, and uh, felt like that uh, to the west goes all the way to Reinemann, the edge of Reinemann Road here, and uh, to the east, all the way over beyond the funeral home, all the way down to Babcock in the corner. And we included, although it doesn't necessarily, I mean, the, the area in red was of our best guess at what everybody would want to see so it's you know we're we're anxious to see and hear what you think would make sense um, the LERDA legislation um, is uh, been a helpful tool to developers particularly when you, you know, over the last two years we've spent a lot of time and money 
studying the property to find out, you know, I don't know if anybody lived here when I was 12, I played golf on Twin Oaks Golf Course, and there were three Pennzoil tanks there, and uh, I think it was about, by the time I was 15, they had the uh, construction of the, the cinema, but we found remnants from all of that previous activity that, that we, we need to clean up. Um, there's, if you look across this hill here, <coughs> along the right of way of McKnight Road, it looks bad. It's just never been cleaned up. Nobody's paid it any attention. When we had the charrette back in, how many months ago, Barry? Uh, year and a half. Year and a half. Um, people were asking for things like ball fields, walking trails, community gardens, all those things come at a cost. So what we're asking is that you consider all of us working together to create something special. So we got a few folks from the school district, I believe. Uh, it was premature to even mention this at the county level yet, because it's just a discussion, but um, I had met with Kim talked about it, said, let's bring it to the public and talk about it. So that's why we're here. Sure. Good evening, again, Barry Ford with Continental. Really, our projects moving forward, uh, the question's been asked, the senior housing, with or without this. My biggest concern here the last two years is I've watched what's going on around us on this property is nothing's going on around us, right? The property to the west has just sat there stagnant and I don't see any activity there. And we really believe that a, an economic incentive, if you put it in place that allows a, a somebody to develop that property and save a little money on their future taxes, not on the existing taxes, is how Alerta works, it will give somebody or someone incentive to develop around all that we're doing. Everybody knows there's a lot to overcome with that site there. It's, it's in, a lot of it's in the floodplain. There are infrastructure issues, as Kevin said, there were uh, environmental due diligence issues. This money would help somebody overcome that and allow our project to be an anchor and allow things to happen around it. So we think it's a win-win for everybody to consider allowing this on the property. I think we picked the red, Kevin, because it's the commercially zoned properties. I think that's how you came up with those, with that, uh, with those red lines. So we really believe it, it, that and our project will allow something to happen on the rest of this valuable property. And so that's why I'm here to support, support Kevin this evening. And I'd like to say, sure. um, because we may, have, we may have skipped over some important things uh, before jumping right into this. Um, first of all, for the record, my name is Kevin McKeegan. I'm with the law firm of Meyer, Unkovic, and Scott. Uh, as Barry indicated, LERTA is a tool that the state put in place 30 or 40 years ago to encourage uh, development of what are referred to as deteriorated areas. So before you can have a LERTA program uh, in a municipality, the first thing that has to happen is that the um, governing body of the municipality, uh, the town council in this instance, has to make a determination that the area in question is blighted. Now, blight um, is one of those words that we think we all know what it means, but of course it's a legal term, so it doesn't necessarily mean what the dictionary says it means. Blight for purposes of LERTA uh, goes back to um, the definition of the Urban Redevelopment Law of 1947. Uh, and among other things, uh, what that definition allows is property to be deemed blighted if it's vacant, overgrown, and unsightly, uh, if it's uh, in a defective design or arrangement of buildings, streets, or lots, or if it uh, evidences economically and socially undesirable land uses. So what has to happen is that um, you, uh, as the governing body, hold a public hearing to make a determination that the property that's being proposed uh, for Alerta uh, uh, ordinance is blighted. Uh, that public hearing uh, is intended to give you uh, input from not only uh, your planning commission, uh, but also the county economic development authority uh, and uh, others who might be interested uh, in the planning process. If you make a determination it's blighted, then you can go on to craft Alerta ordinance. Now what does Alerta ordinance do? So if you think about taxes right now, they're starting here. Presumably when things get built, they're gonna be here. So what the Alerta ordinance does is say, the 
the incremental increase, the incremental assessment, some portion of that is going to be abated for a limited period of time. The statute says it can be no longer than 10 years. Uh, and that is meant to encourage development of the property. What typically happens in most LERDA ordinances is that the statute allows you to abate 100% of that in incremental value. Most ordinances say, no, it's going to be some percentage of the increase, 50%, 60%, 40%. Uh, it's usually capped at a set dollar amount. So regardless of whether uh, the incremental tax value might generate $300,000, you can cap that. Uh, you can cap the abatement amount at $100,000. Uh, and most ordinances uh, have that abatement decline over time on the theory that um, we want to encourage development, but we don't, want, uh, we don't want the pigs at the trough, so to speak. So you may start, you may have an ordinance that's for 10 years. Every two years, the amount of the abatement drops by uh, 20% so that at the end of the 10-year period, uh, the abatement is fully extinguished. So I just wanted to make sure everybody understand that this is not, this is not just walk in the door and get it. It's something where we have to work with the municipality uh, both in terms of uh, making a determination of blight uh, and then with the municipality and the school district and others who might be interested in terms of how uh, the abatement of that incremental increase in value that comes when buildings are built, uh, how, that, uh, how that gets uh, uh, appropriated. Again, it does not change any underlying assessments now. So if this property has a $100,000 assessment as vacant land, uh, you always collect 100% of those taxes. It only looks at the uh, incremental increase that may come uh, when a building is built. So I hope that uh, sort of brief overview of uh, the LERDA statute and how it works uh, was helpful. Kevin, in your experience, is property like this cons is considered blighted? Is that the typical? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, it's, um, I don't need to tell you the history. It's okay. been vacant for a long time. Uh, it's subject to uh, uh, flooding and other things. There are environmental conditions there. Uh, that need to be ameliorated. So, uh, you know, again, when we think of the word blight, we think of, uh, you know, the slums of uh, uh, post-World War II uh, urban, uh, uh, urban areas, but, but it's a broader term than that. It can certainly include property of this type. <coughs> Any questions or comments from council? Uh, yes, I would like to ask, have you spoken to the five other property owners? Do they know about this and what their thoughts are? We've had some conversations, but we have not specifically uh, asked them to join into it. We thought it okay. would be appropriate to have the conversation sure. here first. And what qualifies that northern piece as a blight? Because that's a cliffside, and it's just stones and some like Well, grass. It, again, we included the district of what was on the yeah. uh, de-development. That, that was the C5 piece. So it may or may not be, we had to pick, pick and choose, but it was an abutting property to Blazier Drive, so we kind of went from one end to Blazier to the other. Okay. And what if they, so what if they don't want that to be developed? Can that be eliminated from the space then? Oh, the if, it, if they don't want to <coughs> develop it, well, then yeah, they don't, okay. it doesn't get developed. Okay. That upper area is not in a floodplain, though, as I, I understand. It's down, it where Ray, it, it's down where Rave Theater is, isn't it? Yeah, th this is the area specifically that's in the, I'm sorry, I'm pointing <coughs> my check. This is the area specifically that's been um, uh, in the flood area, the area that uh, obviously had gotten through the building at one point. And uh, that's, that's the side Rave Theater is. Right. What you're pointing this to. This area did not. Right, right, the upper area. Bruce, would you like to weigh in on this? No. Well, <laughs> uh, there's a whole lot of questions out here about whether or not we want to do this. As I understand it, if we are going to do it, uh, the town has to facilitate it. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. I think we at least, we at least have to facilitate it. Uh, from a town perspective, we've got to be very careful with uh, giving tax abatements. Our taxes in the town are, I think, the second or third lowest in the county. If we're going to start giving tax abatements, it's going to be uh, very difficult for us. Uh, the other part of this is if we are developing commercial uh, 
developing this commercially, our services, our fire department and police department are going to have to, those services are, are going to have to be provided there. So we're going, it's going to cost us money if this is developed in a commercial way. It'll be nice to have those taxes that would be generated from that, since our taxes are so low to begin with, it would be nice to have those taxes come back to us. Now, if you're looking at county taxes and school taxes, uh, that's a different story, and I don't know if they have an appetite for doing this or not, but that'll, that's something for them. But I think that we could facilitate it, if need be. But actually participating, that's a, something you'd have to give a great deal of thought to. The other thing is, it's at this point very vague. We don't know what kind of abatements they would be looking for or, or uh, revitalization uh, taxes uh, they'd be looking for. There's, there are a lot of questions to it. So if I think it needs a lot more discussion before anybody moves ahead with it. I have a question with regard to the taxes. Do the um, county and school need to, do we all need to say yes before it moves forward, or can one part be separated out from that? Uh, no, they do not. Uh, they do not need to, it can be individually, but I still think that we have to be the facilitator. Uh, we have to form a district, as I understand it. Tell us, tell us about that district. The district, I think it, it has to be, uh, I'm not the expert on this. I, Gavin and uh, Kevin know a lot more about it than I do. But uh, I believe that we just have to have a meets and bounds district. And someone's going to have to have that surveyed and come up with the, uh, with the meets and bounds. Part of that, we have to have public hearings uh, and make sure that everybody that's in it is involved and it has to be equal and fair and that's about all that I can tell you about it. And if, if I may, the, um, and either Gavin or Kevin could correct me if I'm wrong, there's a number of different parts that <coughs> would occur here. One is that the town designate a specific area based on those legal descriptions uh, as a LERDA district. The town can also designate that area as blighted under the definition in the Redevelopment Act. Then the town can consider any kind of a tax exemption along with the school district and the county. There's, there's nothing to say that all three have to grant the exemption. But the, the town is the only entity that can create the LERDA district and, the, and declare the area blighted. Yes, that, that, that's, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll jump in if I think you're saying something wrong. Thank you. I, I know you will. Uh, Mr. Grimm, that's exactly correct. The, 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 the municipality's first role is to make it is to make is to make a finding of blight and to designate the area uh, for which an abatement may be possible. Whether the municipality chooses to then participate in any sort of abatement program is a separate decision. But neither the county nor the school district can consider an abatement program until there's been a designation of blight. So that's kind of like the first level question. Regarding Bruce's comments, uh, again, it's important to keep in mind that whatever taxes you're getting out of the property now doesn't change. Uh, and you have the flexibility in the abatement program to say, OK, we're only going to abate 50% of the taxes, uh, the incremental value, or we're only going to abate 60% or 40%. So it's not like, it's not like the incremental value disappears uh, or you can't touch it. That's part of working out what the um, actual abatement program is, um, as opposed to just some sort of flat, um, um, flat zeroing out of that incremental value. Did I get anything wrong, Gavin? I think you're good. And I think we, I don't know if we've said specifically, though, that it's, we're talking about the actual cost of the improvements. Th that's, right? Well, it's the, it's, the assess, it's the increase in assessment that's attributable to those improvements. So the that's correct. Cost the, the actual improvements. cost of improvements. So we talk right. about things like you know, <laughs> trails and ball fields, you're really not going to see much of an impact right. from a tax saving standpoint. Exactly. Right? You're talking about commercial type buildings. Um, is where you're going to get your yeah. It's it's a tax. It, it's an abatement that applies to uh, improvements, not to landscaping. Right. Okay. Any comments from the public? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. No. Chairman. I have questions. A couple questions. Um, the public good. Uh, we're talking about um, taking future tax dollars and giving them back to the developer. I believe is what this, they're asking for. What, what is there any sense of what? 
specifically the public good other than the development of the site that that brings to the town or the other taxing bodies? Bruce, did, did you have some sense? Are we, are we building a road um, that the town, the people in the town can use with their tax dollars, or are we just giving it to the developer to At this point, it's, it's in very early stages of discussion. I don't think any of that's been determined at this point. At least I, this is the first I've actually seen even a district even. So you, yeah. it, we're, we're, we're not to that point of making that determination yet. I, I, you, and that's you, the you that is the important question made, for the taxpayers amazing, for sure. Yeah, you made some amazing points. Um, and my concerns obviously were we are now up to a 20-year cycle on our repaving program. Our so our capital funding badly needs to be uh, restored. We've got an ambulance authority that's uh, on life support. I'm sorry for the pun, but uh, and and this will only uh, put more uh, more weight on it. Um, I have a lot of questions and concerns. You know. You know, taking into clearing a multi-million dollar site, blighted. Uh, everybody in the town knows it's it's not been developed for five years because it's tied up because of a purchase of a, sl a sliver of land there, a uh, million dollar sliver, uh, that, that blocked the development of the site. So a lot of questions. I, I think w what we'd be looking for is um, public good, real public good from this. Um, and... Uh, and how much control would the town have over over that um, that crafting of that the agreement, that that LERDA agreement? In other words, if the school district were to grant an alerta, do, would they be the only participants in that agreement, or would the town have some voice in that? If if all three taxing bodies are participatory, each of us would have a say in how it was how it was done. If the town um, grants, my question is, if the town grants this this blight condition, and the school board, the school district decides to proceed, and I'm a school taxpayer. Oh, who's going? I understand the question. Does this That's town the, have any voice and any control over over how that LERDA um, benefit is crafted and agreed to? Regardless, our, our planning and zoning ordinances are in effect no matter what. So from that perspective, absolutely. Uh, for the, quote, public good, uh, I think all three of us would have to negotiate what that public good would be as, as we're doing. At least that's how I would see it happening. Yeah, and it's up to the school district without input from the town as to what sort of benefit they would want to provide, right? So, I mean, it's up to the town to, set the, to, to make the determination initially. It's up to the town to determine whether there's any abatement that the town wants to take part in, and then the school district would have the option and the county would have the option to provide whatever benefit they deemed fit without necessarily input from the town. I see. I think it's important if we are to move forward that we have a good idea of what the plan might be. I mean, we understand what Barry's doing on that piece of property and we understand um, Kevin what you're anticipating doing on at least one part there's still one uh, piece that we're not sure of but you also have a piece that the Port Authority controls you have another several pieces that um, would be unknowns I think for the town to seriously consider anything, my recommendation would be that we have a good sense of what may occur so that we know short-term and long-term, or short-term what we might be giving up, long-term what we'd be gaining. So I think a more cohesive plan needs to be drawn up or at least conceptualized. If I may just address that for a minute in Mr. Kirk's question, which was a good one. Um, I see primarily the benefit, that piece of property to the left of where we're developing, the Showcase Cinema site, that group tried to sell me that property for five or six years. They tried to sell it to everyone. And the reason that nothing has happened there is because of the condition, not some other deal, some other parcel. And, and I think my perspective here, like I said, I'm moving forward with my project with or without this. We're excited to get started, and we're going to be doing that quickly. Um, but, but my comment is that if, if you don't help put something in place, nothing is going to happen there. Nothing is going to happen there. And so I think the public good is, do you want it to look like this, or would you like to help 
create a project, a, a plan that allows something nice to go forward there. So anyway, I'm just throwing out, as I see it from my perspective, that the main good there is that it won't look like this 20 years from now. It's going to look like something else. And you have great zoning ordinance in place to protect you with what can get built. And so that ordinance doesn't get touched by any of this. Obviously, anybody developing, whether it's us or somebody else, has to follow all of those rules. So anyway, I just throw that out to, in response to your question, Mr. Hurt. May I ask, um, previously you gave us a pamphlet. Kevin gave us a pamphlet as to what the upper end would look like, the development. But you're talking about where Showcase Cinema is. Do you have any idea what, what you would put in there? We don't own the property. I realize that, yeah. but but aren't you encompassing that with all of this? Yep, we're, we are. We're including that as within the district so that that owner has some tools in their tool bag to hopefully incentivize oh, them so to you're, do something. We okay, like you're to not something. We'd like to see something happen because yeah. we're about to make a large investment and we've got what we've got on either side of us not looking so good. And I would just remind you that in McCandless Crossing, we did alert uh, 2009, uh, and that was only Allegheny County. But what we what it allowed us to do as a developer, we spent 11 million dollars on the infrastructure. So in the case of the county, which McCandless had to determine that the area was blighted uh, for us to move forward, so that the county could consider it, <coughs> the county then over the last 10 years has provided an increment to us that has reduced our initial capital investment of 11 plus million dollars to about uh, almost 2.2 million ended up being their investment while still getting something that they weren't getting before. In addition, you know, today the, there's 20, almost 2,400 jobs uh, that were created there as a result of that action. So there's some there's ongoing benefits beyond just seeing the property develop. So you're not looking at purchasing the Ray property? No, ma'am. Okay. Just, just to clarify for everybody, the LERDA that was established uh, that Kevin just mentioned, uh, absolutely the, the county finally in 2009 decided to add on to uh, jump on to the LERDA part of it and it was entirely separate from what the town and the school district did back in 1991. In 1991, we formed a transportation district and we picked out five, five areas of traffic improvements that were made as part of that. And, and that was the, for the hospital, we did Babcock and Cumberland. We did for uh, LaRoche and everybody's improvement, we did, uh, we did Duncan and Babcock, we did Duncan and McKnight, which was a huge part of the project. And at the time that we did that, we did, there was a, uh, if, if you look at it now, there's like a, a fish hook street, Duncan Avenue, that goes the whole way back to Home Two Suites. That was part of the plan because there, I think there were five different property owners. And the town thought that because we didn't want access to McKnight, we did a, uh, we designed that road, our, our traffic engineer designed that road. So each of those five property owners uh, would have access without tapping into Mc, or having an access to McKnight, direct access to McKnight Road. Kevin, when Kevin came along, he honored that part of it. And, the, uh, and then Cumberland and, and McKnight was another project. So we, those were, that's a different type of LERTA. And, and on top of that, those improvements were also paid for uh, by, by a tax on each trip. So there was a tax that was paid on, on each trip. I think it, at the time it was uh, averaged out to probably $52 a trip. And each of the property owners had to pay according to the number of trips they had. So that's an, an although the concept is the same, it's a whole different process. There was no tax abatement or tax relief given for that from the town or from the school district. In fact, both of us at the time uh, were adamant that we weren't going to uh, give McCandless Crossing. Sorry, Kevin. We, were, <laughs> no, you know it. No, you came. You go but ahead. Your point. Your points well taken. They had already provided the original transportation district that had right. been in place since 1991. So that was a good starting point. Uh, the whole point, though, was we had conditional use zoning. Everybody had a seat at the table. That's what I'm asking tonight, or where we're asking tonight is. Let's get a table, let's get around it, and let's see what we can do to come up with a good plan for this. 
school district, county, town of McCandless, <coughs> us, and maybe the adjacent property owners can a plan that clearly identifies the benefits so that everybody can look at them and make a decision. Is it good for us or not good for us? I think, I think that's what we're looking for, the benefits. I, I think one of the things might be a little bit confusing for, for council and just sort of the way it's presented is this is, the order of things is a little unusual for, for a loaded district in this case, as you can probably tell. I mean, normally you have a property that just you can't develop under any circumstances. You're just desperate to try to get someone there to do it. And, you know, you, you use these incentives to try to get that developer to come and, and do a development. Now, there could be aspects of these properties that, that would sort of fit that bill. But I think maybe your question is, you may be asking is, well, we, there's already development approved going forward without, right. the, without the incentive. And so that's why it's, you know, it's, it's a little bit backwards, you know, I'm not saying that they, what they don't believe that they have merit here, it's just that that's, the order's just a little bit different than you would normally see this pre presented. To that point, Mr. Rob, is there a reason that we couldn't separate the, the property out so that we already know that Mr. Ford is gonna proceed with the development on the one end, is there a reason that we couldn't just make the Lerda district smaller for the other end? There's not. If uh, the town council did made a determination that, that the ASP, you know, the, the, maybe the cinema property or another property down towards that end was was in fact lighted and, and development in that area needed to be incentivized, that would be an option on the table. And you know, that would, I guess, collectively maybe benefit that whole area as well. Any questions or comments from from the public? Uh, public comment will be at the end. At the end of at, all the items? At the, okay. at the end of the finance question okay. committee on all the items. Okay, should we move to item two? <coughs> item two, review checklisting number two, dated January 1, 2020 through January 31, 2020, totaling $1,074,218.42 as submitted to each member of council and posted on a bulletin board in a town website. Any questions or comments? We have a motion? There's no motion. Take the review. Okay. Okay. Item number three, review the monthly financial summary and dashboard report. Good evening, Council. You have before you a continuation for December of 2019. We have, we continue to report on fiscal 2019 results um, because we're still in the 60 day governmental accrual period. Um, 19's results are more pertinent than 20's at this time. As you can see, revenues are at 105% of budget compared to 101% in 2018. Um, our expenditures are about 95% of budget compared to 90% in 2018. These numbers will continue to fluctuate through the audit um, at the end of next month. So, um, you know, please be advised that these numbers may change um, as the audit comes in and as revenue continues to come in as well as delayed invoices and such. Um, I do believe that we will finish the year under budget with the expenditures um, and I do believe we've received a majority of the revenue at this time. Do you have any questions? Yes, ma'am. There was a one-time payout for a commission that was paid on a software development to some members of the town of McCandless. We do expect for there to be some amount of adjustment on that. We learned at a later date that the tax that was calculated was calculated at the city rate versus the town rate. So while that one-time influx on the commission uh, will not reoccur, we do expect it also to be reduced before the end of the fiscal year is, is finalized. It was close to, when it came in, it was almost a half a million dollars. Thank you. Um, Ms. Greathouse. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, later, later tonight, we're going to be um, re reviewing and, and possibly approving the paving program for 2020. And I, as I brought up earlier, yes, uh, we learned um, in, in conversations here, uh, committee meetings with Mr. Sabina, that, uh, that our public works uh, paving program uh, cycle uh, which was uh, 10 years, uh, mm -hmm. 10, 10 years ago maybe, uh, has stretched to a 20 year cycle. Yes, sir. Um, and, and I'd like to, uh, at this time, because we don't have regular committee meetings, I'd like to ask council, it, I, I believe it's time to undertake some type of planning 
to restore that capital funding and at least get that that capital road replacement cycle down to 15 years, which I believe is roughly the estimated <laughs> life span of the uh, of the asphalt that we're using yeah. with the super pay. Yes, sir. As as you're aware, with this year's budget, the uh, paving program for 2020 is partially funded with the liquid fuels money from the state, as well as the investment from last year's um, fund balance investment. Um, it will continue to be so hopefully in the next few years. As you can see in tonight's report, we will finish hopefully this year with a surplus in the general fund fund balance investment, and that will be directed to next year's investment into capital projects. And so um, as, as we continue to budget accordingly and conservatively, those amounts can be funded through general fund surpluses. Because um, the liquid fuels money, I believe, um, has been steady, but not a really increased in, the, in prior right. years. And I, I guess I guess what I'm suggesting is it might be beneficial for council if we had a target uh, number. I mean, I could do the back of the envelope and say we're spending two million this year, and if that's yes, the 20-year cycle, if we had another million dollars every year, we could we could reduce it to 15-year cycle. Um, if that's the target, I think it'll be valuable for all of us as we make really tough decisions on prioritizing our, our funds going forward, as you said, to create potentially that surplus needed. Yes, sir. I, it's something we can certainly discuss during the 2021 budget process. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number four, move to adopt resolution number four of the 2020 series, a resolution amending resolution number 13 of 2018 by naming current signatories authorized to sign documents relative to the town of McCandless Defined benefit pension plans. Is there a sec? Is there a motion? You made the motion. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and a second. Does council have any questions about this? Um, Mr. Chairman or Madam President, um, question. Um, this resolution, um, there are five members, three of them are council members. Under this resolution, Theoretically, two council members could change the pension plan without staff's knowledge. Is there, is there anything in the resolution that would ensure that staff management of the town would be notified if, if such a change were made? Or should that be placed in that, mo in that resolution? At this point, uh, Mr. Kirk, there's nothing that would prohibit that from occurring? Uh, any language in the resolution could be amended that, to that effect. We can, yeah, it's a, it's a malleable document until we vote on it. And even after that, it could be amended. Um, it's, you know, it doesn't have the advertising requirements like an ordinance, so we can, we can work with the language. If it's, if it's a pleasure of council to, uh, to put that safeguard in there just to, to at least for coordination communication purposes, it, it is a rather large pension fund. I agree. I think someone from the town should be involved also so that we don't have just two, two uh, council members. It's five people who will be on the signatures, and it will be right. president, vice president, secretary, Bob, and Trish. So there will be five people on there. Any two of those five could sign. So it's not just council are the only signatures. Pre did I explain that correctly? You, you, you okay. did, and that, yeah. and that, that is my concern, yeah. that, that, that with only two signatures required and no requirement for notification to town management, right. theoretically, any two of the three elected officials listed on there could make Excellent. significant changes, investment decisions for our pension plan. And I, I have a concern with that. I, I would agree with you. Yeah, I, I do it, too. It, it provides a like a balance and check and balance of power. Right. Uh, That's precisely. Thank you. Do you, so do you want do you want to have the have the manager be a, a, a required signatory just to ensure that he's one that you know, to make it three and then two plus the manager? That would right. that would be I, my preference. Yes, and I would agree. Acceptable. Mm -hmm. so what if we said in the uh, in that second paragraph, if we added a comma after that and said that in addition to the town manager, any two of the five in individuals addition. listed. Right. In addition to the town manager, right. <clears throat> any two of the four, since he was the first. Right, right, that's a good point, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
and you would do something in the, the very next paragraph similarly. Right. Correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah I think the exact same change, right? Yes. I move to adopt the amended resolution. As amended? He said yes. amended, yeah. Okay. He said amended. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, item number five, seminars. Oh, they're not comments. Right. Are there any are there any comments from any citizens? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting the amended? Proposal indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next. Okay. I'm number five, seminars and conferences. There is a seminar for the Allegheny League of Municipalities Spring Conference on April 2nd through 5th for this year, of course. Are there any other conferences or seminars? I'd just like to announce the services dinner. Where's the what's the deadline for RSVPing on the Services Appreciation Dinner. It was actually. Dead, this last part deadline is this Friday. Okay. All right. So um, that is February 20th, yes. 6 o'clock. Yes. So the hard deadline is Friday. So um, anyone who's involved with the uh, boards, committees, or authorities um, are welcome. And administrative staff, too. Please RSVP so um, you can have your, your seat at our Appreciation Dinner. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Item number six: public comment on reports. Anything else? Steve Burns, 180 Ridge Avenue. I have a quick question on the Lerta. Um, is there a time frame on that? For example, if um, let's say everybody south of Blazer came in and 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 redeveloped the area. <laughs> In the next five years, would then the property north of Blazer be able to come in in maybe ten years and take full advantage of this on what's no longer a blighted area at all? The, uh, that's all set forth by the by the ordinance. So if, if it's within the geographic area that's determined to be blighted, then the town can set a schedule for not to exceed ten years, sort of however they want to set that up. Good evening, Marcia Caliendo, um, Abbey, Abbey Road, Abbey Lane. Um, question about the Lerda. Um, does this include <coughs> the funeral home and the, what's it, two office buildings that are currently there as well? No, so just the undeveloped property that includes the rave cinemas, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay, so nothing is there. Um, I, I just, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around this and it's very difficult to try to say this is something we might want to do without any type of plan and without somebody saying this is what we want to do to the rave cinemas, which I do perceive that as being blighted. I'm not sure about the rest of the property being blighted, but we certainly know what the issues are around the rave cinemas. Um, and to include everyone in that where we have something that's already under development um, and basically the, the people who are going to be resigning there are not going to be taxpayers because they're retired, so there's no earn, earned income in any of the retirement, um, uh, the community, for the most part, uh, that's a generalization, uh, who will be utilizing services such as the ambulance authority um, <laughs> at a higher ratio than other, other residents. So I, I just don't understand why something that's already planned and uh, ready to break ground or near ready to break ground, why we would want to include that in, in, in with the LERDA. But I do understand the need to do something with RAVE. So, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, zoning Committee. Um, Bruce, do you want to, before we make a motion about uh, corporate drive, do you want to speak on this so we know what we're? So 
Uh, this is a little bit of a new procedure since we're having both our committee meeting and voting meeting, in the, meeting on the same night. So uh, we're going to have a presentation. Tonight we have with us Lydia Cessna, who represents Zell 2, the, uh, the manager and owner of Corporate Drive, McCandless Corporate Center. Uh, Kevin McKeegan is here serving dual purposes. He's here for, for the uh, Altavia development. John Friedrich, Anthony Samalis are the engineers on the job. And last but not least, Kevin Rutledge is the, is the architect on the job. So we had a long, two long meetings with the planning commission discussing this, and I think we ended up with a very good plan. Uh, it was probably a very good plan to begin with, but we didn't know it. So Kevin and John and Anthony and Tom Price from, from Kevin's office spent a lot of time redoing the plans and showing them to us. So I think uh, the Planning Commission ended up being impressed with this, and I hope everybody is. It was a great plan. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Kevin. First, I want to thank uh, members of, of council for hearing our proposal for 5300 Corporate Drive. Um, as you're probably aware, this is the site of the former TGI Fridays, which has since been torn down. I'm sure a lot of us have uh, memories of that site. And we hope that what's going in there is going to be even better than what was there before. Um, again, the uh, property is 5300 Corporate Drive. It's bounded on the west side by McKnight Road on the east side by Corporate Drive, and the main entry to the site is from uh, Corporate Drive. Uh, just a quick agenda, we're going to run through some technical requirements on the site design. Uh, John Frederick from CEC will lead that discussion. I'll come back up and talk about the goals with the building design and also the landscape design. And then if you all have questions, we can field them during the question and answer. And the appendix is there if we need to look at any technical questions or get in further into the weeds. So with that, I'll give it over to uh, John for the site design. Hi, good evening. John Frederick with Civil and Environmental Consultant, Civil Engineer for the project. Again, as indicated, uh, this is a view from northbound McKnight Road looking at uh, what was the TGI Fridays on 5300 Corporate Drive. It's a 2.3 acre parcel again bound by McKnight Road and Corporate Drive. This is a view from the main entrance off of Corporate Drive, again looking northbound <coughs> to what was the former TGI Friday's restaurant. And you, want, you okay? Okay. Um, and due north is uh, the 5500 Corporate Drive, uh, the um, multi-story office building in the, in the background there. The site plan, this is the existing conditions. This shows what was the TGI Fridays, uh, originally constructed in the 1980s uh, at about 9,400 9, square feet of uh, restaurant use with the outdoor patio, reconstructed about uh, 2000, 2001 to what is shown here today, uh, maintaining the, backwards, maintaining the entrance off of Corporate Drive at this location. Here to the south is a restaurant um, located in this location. And there is an interconnect to 5500 Corporate Drive at this location, which falls into or drops into the 5500 parking lot over here, as well as an interconnecting staircase um, connecting 5500 Corporate to 5300 Corporate. Uh, the building was taken down last fall. Um, all the utilities were capped in, in uh, prep for new development on site. The existing stormwater system shown here along the east side of the property will be maintained. Uh, we will be adding to that to maintain provisions and meet the provisions for the water quality for the site as we redevelop. This is the site plan showing the restaurant as planned. Uh, two tenants, Kevin will desc describe in more detail the actual ar um, architectural features of the building, but in general, the south side is tenant one, which is 6,500 square foot footprint, and future tenant two, which is a 5,000 square foot footprint with an adjoining 1,500 square foot outdoor patio. 
Uh, the parking has been distributed, again, similar to what the TGI Fridays uh, provided previously. Um, on the north and south ends, we uh, have our ADA accessible parking stalls. There is a total of 153 parking spaces throughout the site, and there is a parking agreement with the property owner, which is the same Zell 2 to our north um, in regard to overflow, so there's an agreement in place for additional parking, again, showing the interconnect for uh, accessibility for driving as well as patron use of the stairs here. Uh, there is sidewalks along Corporate Drive at this location here on the west side of Corporate Drive. We are providing a concrete sidewalk extension along the south entry into the uh, parking field at this location here. That was one comment from the Planning Commission. As well as we realigned through dialogue and feedback from the Planning Commission, we widened the front drive here to better align the egress and um, ingress movements of the entrance drive. So we have a 30-foot drive here as well as it um, better suited for vehicular and um, some of the emergency response vehicles uh, for the town of McCandless. Again, the uh, provisions for the outdoor areas, uh, Kevin will describe some of the features of the seating areas. Um, but in general, again, also we on the grading plan here for stormwater management, uh, working with um, the requirements for additional um, water quality, we have a system planned on the north end of the lot here, a three tank system that again feeds and empties into the existing system here, which then feeds the main system along Corporate Drive. Again, we're bound by um, McKnight Row, so there are buffer requirements will, which will be discussed and shown in detail along McKnight, the frontage here, which is the uh, actually the back of the buildings. The frontage, the main entries for tenant one is this location here, for tenant two, this location here. All utilities basically on site will be redesigned and reconfigured for the two tenants. So we've worked with Westview Water as well as the SOAR Authority for new connections, uh, Duquesne Light and, and gas. So all the service providers uh, all have been coordinated in regard to uh, new services for the two tenants. Uh, last is, um, I guess, the discussion in regard to, uh, Kevin will describe more of the aesthetics of the site, um, particularly the landscape in addition to the building. Any questions regarding the site or the land development aspect of the application? Uh, I, I have one. Uh, the other uh, evening we had a, uh, a forum here uh, regarding flash flooding issues. And I guess I direct this maybe better to, to Bruce, uh, but this stormwater uh, system you've got, um, you know, one of the discussions in that forum was the concern for uh, post development uh, release rates that are causing flash floods and the questioning whether or not those 100 year models uh, are, are adequate for the, the type of storms that we're now encountering on, a, on an annual basis multiple times. And so my question to you is, has that consideration been put into this to give us some relief from the stormwater? Uh, so I see a lot of pavement here, I, I know that. Um, but uh, release rates are really an issue, and the old 100-year storm model, as it was calculated over a 24-hour period, is not adequate, does not appear to be adequate for these storms. Uh, quite uh, a few, few answers to that question, and I appreciate the question. I've talked to at least two residents about that for this development. First off, this development was uh, back in the 1970s and 80s it was designed, but they were ahead of their time because they already do have stormwater management in this area right now. And so if you look up through here, there's a significant amount of extra stormwater uh, that, that, that's been added on there. Uh, we don't, uh, John, I, I don't believe we control the one-year storm. I think it's the two. Two, two through the 100. Two, two, 10, 25, and 100. We, can, uh, we will be talking, the town will be talking about amending its ordinance uh, if it's legally possible to go to the one-year flash storm. And, uh, but at this time when this was started, uh, we, we can't get there uh, yet. And uh, this is a redevelopment site. That's the other part. This is a redevelopment site. So they'll be, uh, they're not adding any more pavement to, the, to this. <coughs> Excuse me. They're not adding any more pavement, um, so there will be significantly less uh, runoff than there is now. 
<clears throat> I hope that's not a sign of something happening. Before, before, before you drop, I, I want to I appreciate the efforts. Um, here's a call for somebody. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Take it so usually far. goes so, away. <laughs> usually goes away after one cough, not that bad. Um, so okay. So, so then to um, to be able to improve the, the outflows, there's, there's some ordinance work that we need to do. Here. We're going to we're going to look at it, and it's been proposed to uh, town council to start looking at, at how we might be able to modify uh, might be able to modify ordinances to account for the uh, flash storms that we've been talking about. As you know, well, in addition to the uh, flood meeting that we had here, uh, we've been talking to a lot of residents uh, about their problems, and that seems like a viable solution if it's if it's legal, and uh, if it's legal, if we can do it. Okay. One I thing appreciate the I would like to add, as, as far as coupled with the comments there, in regards to some of the uh, changes over time that have occurred with stormwater management. Uh, we also look at the most current storm water intensities or rainfall durations that occur over a 24-hour period, which is the NOAA, the um, National Oceanic Administration. So there's tracking that occurs. So they take the latest data that exists based on this region, rainfall that occurs. And so it's not published data that you've seen in ordinance in the past where you use 5.7 inches for the 100-year. They look at current data and data that's relative to current times and not something that was published decades ago. No, I appreciate that. I wish you would have been here to see the packed house standing room only I, to, we to, see it. To, to absolutely demonstrate that it is a problem. I appreciate okay. that. Appreciate Thank you. It. John, does this have a, an additional release rate in the Gertie's Run area? It does. It, it has reductions. So we, we have, in addition, we Gertie's Run has an, another reduction on top of all that. Oh, actually, this goes doesn't go to Gertie's Run. It goes to uh, uh, West Little Pine Creek. Yes, I'm sorry. It still has a further reduction, and uh, it's not 100% release rate. No further questions. Uh, you're saying that this is a, a two-tenant building. It is. Do you have a second tenant at this time? Um, that will be just the, the second tenant is unnamed at this point. I'm sorry. Mike. Unnamed at this point. Unnamed. There's 153. Okay, so there, so this is just like traffic. Oh, I just no, th those sure. are just like if I was counting. So they're parking along um, McKnight Road then as well, not just. Yeah, the road. current site plan based on this this location here, the existing okay. parking. This is um, all parking here. Okay, it was just a little lighter than the other ones. I wasn't sure if that was like. A the difference line. there is the existing parking stalls are kind of the faded back line mm -hmm. work, where the darker lines are the the new okay. striped. Okay, thank you. For okay, that. you're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else? I'll turn it over to Kevin for the landscape and building. Thank you. Okay, so the concept for the building, uh, as John mentioned, it's a two-tenant uh, shell-only project at this point, so we're not pursuing um, approval for an actual restaurant. We're just looking at the shell of the building, <coughs> the foundations, the steel, the, the envelope and the basic building systems that will support a future tenant. So there is no occupancy tied to this, to this approval. But we started with a concept for the shell of the building for, uh, while it would have two tenants, the idea is that it would present as one building and have one look from the street. And the idea was that the architecture of the building would be uh, a draw and it would, it would grab your attention from McKnight Road and make you want to know what was up there, and if you already knew what was up there, it would serve as a landmark for the restaurant that you'd be uh, going to. Um, to address the question about the tenants, uh, currently tenant one is slated for uh, Big Burrito Group. Mm -hmm. um, the Alta Via concept has been discussed for that. It's a um, higher-end Italian restaurant that currently has a, a spot in Fox Chapel. Um, currently there are no, there's no indication for a second tenant um, for the other space, so that's truly a shell only uh, area until a new tenant is brought on board. So the finishes palette, we early in the design looked at two different schemes for this building. One was more of a traditional Pittsburgh steel and brick look. Um, it's something that we all like, we see a lot of. But for this we want to do something a little bit different. 
um, something that was a little bit uh, perhaps not native to Pittsburgh. Um, so we have a little bit more of a uh, Mediterranean or a Californian uh, type of vibe to it with uh, more of a res ref uh, excuse me, restrained materials palette that works a little bit more with warmer textures, uh, off-whites, warm wood tones, and contrasts that with the plantings and some trellis elements uh, that we'll see as we uh, get further into the design. Um, so what we're showing here is a stucco texture that will feature uh, prominently on the building facade and make it look essentially like a uh, clean white box is what we're going for. That's broken up by wood textures uh, in this sort of slatted appearance, a nice, uh, a nice warm wood stain. Um, the stucco is bounded by stone at the base and also at the top. Um, we also have a counterpoint of painted brick and we'll see where that uh, comes in just to give it a little bit more texture, a little bit more mass. And then we'll also see that there is a, a trellis element with a vine on the McKnight side of the building. So here's what the uh, building would look like from the corporate drive entry. This is looking at the entry to the tenant one space here. Uh, as John mentioned, the tenant two entry is uh, just down the sidewalk from there. The idea, again, is that the building has a, a cohesive appearance to it. So no matter who the tenant is, the building always looks the same way. The tenant, say tenant two comes in and they want to paint the other side pink, well, that's not going to work. So we're going to keep it uh, in, this, in this vocabulary and in this architectural style that we've set up. Uh, but you can see that we have the stucco for the main building here. Uh, the second building is supposed to read as separate from this area while still being the same structure. And to do that, we offset the two tenant areas and lowered the parapet height slightly of this so that it looks like two separate buildings, but really it's one building, again, with the same architectural language. Uh, the tenant one entry has a slatted wood uh, element above it, as does the tenant two entry. Both entries have a canopy uh, that's clad with wood again and the tenant one canopy continues across and becomes a trellis <coughs> over a, uh, another area of their space that has a lower roof. And then that is capped off with, a, uh, with this brick wall, this painted brick wall that we've, we've introduced, one to uh, break up the material palette a little bit and provide some texture and some interest, um, but also to provide a bit of an acoustic and visual buffer to the parking that is south of the site. So these are the elevations looking straight on at the building. Um, again, this is the, uh, excuse me, the east elevation facing corporate drive. Tenant one is here, uh, tenant two is here. You can see that we've been deliberately restrained with the use of windows in the building. Um, that's partly to uh, reinforce the uh, design that we're going for, but also it has been requested by the tenant for this space where they want to uh, be able to create more of an immersive environment for their restaurant and by controlling the views out to the site, they're able to make that more of an inward-focused restaurant. The other thing it allows us to do is to frame views across Corporate Drive to an area that's currently a planted hillside. We understand that there is intent for development on that parcel in the future, but for now, um, it's probably the best view from the site, and we wanted to take advantage of that. Uh, this is the south elevation facing the parking lot. This is the brick wall that we were uh, discussing. That, again, is painted. It's uplighted, so especially at night, it'll have some really interesting shadows. It'll read really nicely. And it's all bounded by a limestone uh, material, both around a door, uh, side door to the uh, tenant one space, and then also an opening in the wall so that as you enter the site, as you approach the site from your car, you have a chance to uh, possibly go through that opening walk across some decorative pavers that we'll see in the, uh, the landscape plan and uh, have a slightly different entry experience. Uh, the west elevation on McKnight Road, while this is the back of the building, we didn't want it to just look like a back of a building. Um, so we have broken up the stucco elevations, again, with the wood element above a back of house door. Uh, this door just goes back into the kitchen for Altavia, but we wanted to dress it up a bit and celebrate it. Uh, you can't see it, but the uh, second tenant also has the same treatment for back of house door there. Uh, we have a wood fence that, uh, uh, excuse me, conceals two elements uh, on 
This area, it will cover an exterior walk-in cooler for the Altavia tenant. Um, also provides a space for future walk-in coolers for tenant two. And then further down, we have a, another fence that conceals a transformer and some electrical equipment that gets mounted outside. But instead of having those be um, rather uninteresting chain link fences, again, we're um, investing a little bit more in them to have them read as the same slatted wood, uh, excuse me, slatted wood material as the entries and it becomes an architectural feature and reinforces the building design. What we're seeing here is an artistic element. The idea is that, and we'll see this a little bit in the next slide, but the idea is that there are two or three main components to this. One, this is a uh, bent metal or a laser cut metal um, artwork that's permanently mounted to the side of the building. The intent is that it reads as a mountainside uh, in profile, so the Alta Via is actually a road in the Dolomite mountain range, and the idea is that this is the profile of the Dolomites uh, rendered in uh, painted steel. To make that a little bit more interesting, we have a stainless steel cable system that's mounted to the ground and then, um, <coughs> excuse me, attached to the building. We'll have climbing plants that can go up that, that trellis system and vines that'll give it this lush appearance in the summer. And then in the winter, you can see that even with the cable system uh, bare of plantings, it still has visual interest. You can read the mountain range uh, profile a little bit more clearly. And in addition to serving as an artwork element on the building, it also reinforces the brand of the tenant in that space. Uh, looking at these elevations, you can see the slatted wood fence here and the uh, slatted wood fence over here. This is for the electrical yard. This is for the walk-in coolers. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, this is the lower area for the tenant one space. Uh, this entire zone is fully enclosed for tenant one. Uh, tenant two has an outdoor patio space that currently is just a concrete slab for future uh, development <coughs> by the tenant uh, in cooperation with us and in cooperation with the landlord. So that's actually what we're looking at here on the north elevation. Uh, one of the comments from council was that this elevation is very uh, bland in comparison to the rest of the building. Uh, we agree, but the idea is that this is kept flexible again so when the second tenant comes on board, uh, they can influence the design of their patio and that patio will be designed again to reinforce the architecture of the rest of the facility. Any questions about the building design before we move to landscape? Yeah, I just ask. One. Sure. Uh, I know restaurants are fairly large energy users. Do you take any special care with the curtain wall of this project or any efforts towards Energy Star or LEED mm -hmm. certifications for this project? Uh, we have not been pursuing um, any sort of LEED or sustainable certification on the project, but the uh, building is designed to meet the current energy code, the 2015 International Energy Conservation Code. Um, which in, in, excuse me, <clears throat> includes higher requirements for <coughs> envelope, roof, and window insulation. So um, the building is inherently efficient because the um, cladding is essentially a layer of continuous insulation with no bridging, and then the finish is applied over top of that. So the thermal envelope is very efficient. We have uh, actually a very low percentage of openings in that thermal envelope and the ones that are in there are highly performing glass, thermally broken frames, um, energy efficient doors, energy efficient frames. Um, so it's a combination of higher performing materials and um, good building design to keep the energy usage uh, reduced from what you might expect otherwise. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. There's a lot, the uh, fencing that you have there is all wood. Yes. A lot of wood. Mm -hmm. Who takes care of it down the road as would deteriorate. Sure. So <clears throat> two parts to that. One is making sure that we spec the right wood uh, initially during construction that it gets finished the right way so that it is less of a maintenance concern over time. So currently we're looking at um, possibly cedar as a material and staining that and sealing that so that maintenance is reduced um, over time. But ultimately the maintenance and the upkeep of that uh, will fall to the landlord and the landlord's uh, crews to make sure that that stays in, in good working order. Thank you. Other questions? Okay. 
Uh, moving quickly to landscape design. Uh, because the building has such a simple and refined palette of materials, we wanted to be a little more expressive and a little more colorful with the plantings. Um, and you can see some of that here. Uh, the goal is to have a variety of plantings in uh, interesting layouts and uh, various, <coughs> excuse me, patterns and colors, and also to have four season interest so that in the middle of winter, um, it's not just a, a barren, uh, boring uh, spot. So we have, excuse me, <coughs> ornamental grasses, flowering perennials, um, fragrant and colorful plants, and we try to work in some other landscape materials such as natural stone pavers and textured concrete to reinforce what we're doing with the landscape. Um, touching quickly on the buffer yard requirements of the zoning code, uh, those actually work in our favor to provide uh, very nicely planted edges to the property and transition us to the street in an elegant way. Um, so we uh, have fairly uh, dense planting along McKnight Road. That's a combination of canopy trees, understory trees, and shrubs, along with a four foot high uh, black picket fence, similar to what you'd see at McCandless Crossing currently. Along Corporate Drive, uh, we have similarly dense buffer yard requirements adjacent to the driveway. But as the site moves down Corporate Drive, the parking lot uh, distance to the property line increases and the plantings taper off some, uh, which also works with the contours of the site because by the time you get here, it's a fairly steep hillside. And then we have some additional plantings uh, required between our parcel and 5500 to the north. Adjacent to the building, this plan's a little hard to see, but um, <clears throat> this is a plan showing the gardens that we're, plan we're, we're planning for around the building. Uh, the idea is that as you approach the site, uh, especially the area in front of Tenant 1 has a, a lush garden appearance. Um, this incorporates the stone pavers and the textured uh, concrete that we mentioned earlier. And so uh, if you're approaching, you can go on the sidewalk, or if your kids want to take a path through the garden, they have the, the ability to do that. Um, it also provides a nicer waiting area outside on a nice day if the restaurant's full and they're, they're rather busy. Um, tenant two, just by virtue of being pulled uh, to the east a little bit closer to Corporate Drive, has a more modest planting bed, uh, but their planting opens up as they get over to the patio space. Uh, this is the concrete slab that I was talking about currently. That would be the uh, footprint for a future uh, patio, again, to be designed <coughs> in conjunction with the landlord and the corn shell architect. Strata. Um, here at the corner of the two buildings, we have an ornamental tree, and then we have another ornamental tree back in this corner, again, just to soften those inside edges. And uh, we also uh, bring the planting around to the back corner of the building and provide a bit of a foundation for the uh, plantings that are going up the trellis on the west elevation facing McKnight Road. We already saw this rendering. Um, I pointed out the uh, trellis, you can see the buffer yard in the front here with the fence, and this is one of the ornamental trees that softens that corner of the building. And then this would be a view from the corporate drive entry, uh, showing a combination of the buffer yards and then also the gardens that we've planned uh, in front of the building. And with that, uh, any questions? What are these Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not sure if those are meant to be accurately uh, rendered, but it's one of the, I don't have the planting list in front of me, but I, I believe the intent, yeah, <laughs> I believe the intent is that that is this um, uh, shrub planting group here. I can't remember what the species is off the top of my head. I, I can't remember, but if they're barberry, mm -hmm. they are not. I couldn't remember, and I just saw how red they were. Yeah, and, uh, I, I soon like, you asked a question, I had the same idea. Okay. Fair point. Mm-hmm. Other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. There are no further questions. I do want to point out that we, uh, the town, has been looking for a traffic signal to be placed at the intersection of the, in, uh, the northern intersection of Corporate Drive and Babcock Boulevard. We've been looking for that uh, since the inception uh, of the Corporate Drive Plan McCandless Corporate Center. And 
we thought that this was going to be the trigger to get that finally put in. Lo and behold, it fell 24 trips short. So the developer, uh, McCandless Corporate Center, uh, Lydia, Cessna in particular has agreed to put the traffic signal in when warranted. Actually, they agreed to put it in when town council wanted it, but I found out that we can't just say put it in, it has to actually meet warrants. So we go, we're gonna have to do a developer's agreement. That's going to be, we suggested that be part of the motion, along with the uh, shared parking agreement uh, with 5,500 corporate drive. So when we get into that, that's part of the motion. Um, suggesting that when we have the complete build out of the second restaurant and kinder care, that a, uh, a new traffic study be done to see if it is warranted uh, in, in reality, as opposed to just projections. That's it. Okay. Then I move to take action on the preliminary and final land development application for a plan known as 5300 Corporate Drive for Zell 2 Inc. located at 5300 Corporate Drive as per parcel number 715L248, formerly the TGI Fridays property, as per project number 19015, pages 1 through 24 prepared by CEC Inc. Date, dated November 27, 2019. The latest revision being January 22, 2020, conditioned upon the signing of a developer's agreement guaranteeing the installation of a traffic signal at the northern intersection of Babcock Boulevard and Corporate <coughs> Drive when warranted by an approved traffic study and agreement with neighboring property at 55 corporate drive to provide a minimum of 20 parking spaces uh, to serve the proposed development. I second the motion. Any comments from anyone in council? Just for clarification, the motion would be to approve the request? Because yes. we, we purposely just left it at take action. Mm -hmm. It would oh, be okay. approved and I would table. Okay. Um, it was approved by the Planning Commission and our town engineers have approved it also. So, um, no comments from any member of council. Any comments from any citizens? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor of the approval? Bruce, you got, you're saying something? Oh, okay. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, we just had public comment on this only one um, article, so I think we can probably move move on from that. Um, report from the Public Safety Committee. Uh, Chief's report. Good evening. A few uh, brief items to note from the police department's perspective uh, that occurred in January here in the town. <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, our traffic, our accident investigators um, investigated one fatal crash in January occurring, occurring on McKnight Road in Arcadia Drive and involved two vehicles, one being a Port Authority bus. There was one fatality. Uh, I believe that investigation has wrapped up uh, on a more positive note, we continue uh, to fit in training whenever it uh, fits within the budget and makes sense uh, for our officers. Um, our officers started their mandatory and service training this month. That will continue on through probably the spring and summer, uh, as well as, like I said, additional training whenever we can uh, fit it in and um, it fits within the budget. Uh, and sticking with the training theme, we uh, trained two officers this year, or I'm sorry, this past month, to be uh, fill-ins for the school resource officers. Uh, beginning the uh, 20th of February here, uh, it becomes mandatory for anyone filling in for uh, as a school resource officer. Uh, they have to have a 40-hour training course, and we train two uh, substitutes uh, that would fill in whenever our two acting school resource officers may be off for whatever reason. Um, and I think that's about all I have. Uh, you all have my report. Are there any questions? Any questions from council? <coughs> I have a comment, if, if I may, please. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for acting chief uh, Hawk 
for stepping in and helping us out with this situation. Uh, we really appreciate your help. I'm honored to do so. I would also like to uh, mention to council that probably in the near future, we will probably have to discuss what we'll be doing looking for a permanent uh, chief. And my feeling is that we need to set up some goals and objectives for a new, chi new chief that, are, that will be coming in. I think that that's extremely important because of the situation that we've, we've gone through. Um, I also think that the officers should have uh, performance evaluations. We discussed that early on and then we didn't, we didn't really do anything with that. So I think that has, should be included. And I feel that all officers should have sensitivity training. Those are just my comments. If I could address a couple of those, I sure. believe Mr. Grimm is working on a uh, maybe a town employee-wide sensitivity training that's to be coming in the near future. Okay. And as far as the performance evaluations, we have a couple of things on the table down there, a couple of different programs that we, uh, w one that I have one of my sergeants working on as we speak, and another one that uh, we, we have researched on and off for probably a year or two. So we have a couple options that are available to us regarding the performance evaluations, ma'am. Okay, then maybe Carolyn and I can meet with you and you could Certainly. enlighten us with, with some of these ideas. I'd appreciate it, but thank you so much for your help. Yes, ma'am. Any additional? Uh, any comments or questions from the public? No, you're good. And Sir, I think you had a question a couple weeks ago about pricing on the vehicles. I sorted that out too. Uh, the write-up that my lieutenant submitted, when we got the invoice, it was $500 less per vehicle for the two explorers, so we ended up saving $1,000. That was a good catch. <laughs> and Mr. Kirk, I love that tie. <laughs> Thank you. He's been looking at you all evening. <laughs> public, public, works, public Works Committee. <laughs> So for the Public Works Committee, we're going to have an item zero, which is to acknowledge Mr. Sabina's 50 years of service to the town. Thank you very much. I will just say that it has been my pleasure. So item number one, the Public Works Activity Report. I believe you all have copies of the activity report for uh, January. Uh, if you have any questions now, I'd be glad to have, answer them for you if I can. And uh, as always, contact me anytime you want to, and uh, I, I will come up with an answer. Mr. Sabina. Sir. A question. Where will we be storing all the extra salt? <laughs> oh, in your garage. How big is your garage? <laughs> <My ass>. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, interestingly enough, had a brief discussion about that at a meeting I was at this morning. And um, uh, over the last couple of years, the suppliers, both Morton Salt and American Salt, because of the lack of need, um, were willing to store salt without a, uh, a, a per ton storage fee. Um, they've not announced that yet this year, but uh, it seems that everybody's in the same boat. Um, we've, we've all got a minimum amount that we need to buy, and um, most folks in, uh, uh, that I was with this morning in the North Hills COG group have not come close to that yet. So um, we will be discussing with the, uh, with the two suppliers uh, the possibility of eliminating the storage fees for this coming summer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Okay. Item two, review a proposed ordinance to authorize the acceptance of Providence Boulevard as a town road and public right-of-way. The public stormwater system therein and replace the performance bond guaranteeing the public improvements with a maintenance bond. So this uh, ordinance, we, we'll have it in our packets and we discussed it last month. But if there's any questions for Mr. Sabina, please feel free to ask. And I think this is a, an ordinance that we have been working uh, with Gavin's office, Bruce, Mark, with the developers, and I think we've 
we have everything in place at this point. Um, all necessary agreements, maintenance bonds. So uh, we are we're good to go. We can advertise that ordinance and uh, proceed uh, upon directive from the council. Okay. Item three. I move to award a contract to A. Liberoni Incorporated, the lowest responsible bidder for construction and repaving of various town roads under the 2020 paving program at a total bid price of $2,002,096. I second. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any questions? We had six bidders this time. Two of the six came in under budget, so that was nice. I would comment that uh, we had sent out 16 packets um, for the bidding. <coughs> of those 16, we had uh, obviously six replies. And uh, I also found out this morning that we uh, are one of the earliest to open bids this year. So we've probably gotten the best prices that we could possibly get. Yep. Yep. Right. Good. Thank you. And I, I would also like to acknowledge that Mark made some adjustments with the specifications this year, which I believe uh, aided in the uh, bids being under budget put some controls in place that didn't exist in the last couple of years. Mark, just out of pure curiosity, um, is that normal six out of 16 that responded? Depends on how much state work is out there. Um, if, if there's not a lot of state work carried over from a previous year, we generally see more bidding on our, on our program. Uh, apparently, um, there's the significant amount of, of carryover work, um, I assume from, from PennDOT work from last year, because with 16 packets out, I, I really thought we'd probably get eight to 10 that actually bid. We got six, so. Um, but if we got good prices, that's good. You know, we got uh, excellent prices. Good, thank you. Any other comments from council? Any other comments from citizens? Hearing none, all. I hope you got to move fast. <laughs> Some days better than others for doing that. Uh, Paul Heckman, uh, 10529 Abbey Lane. I have a question about why, what the advantage is to the town of having Providence Road as a township highway. Yeah. I live in a, private, in, a, in a private community, and I've been asked several times by my constituents, I'm a member of the, the board there, who say, well, we have private road, but we pay the same taxes as everybody else does on the value of our property and all that stuff. Why can't this be a public road? And I said, well, because that's not how they set it up. So I know somebody's going to see this and ask me the question about why shouldn't ours be that? Is there an advantage to the town inherently in having that as a public road as opposed to what it is now? I think, we, I think we lost our individual in this room who has the most, <laughs> the most institutional knowledge and is best able to, I, I believe it was always planned to be a public road. Mark, do you know the answer to that question? It was, um, as my understanding, because of the access for the church, um, it was deemed that that needed to be a public road because of, of the traffic in and out of the church, as well as the traffic in and out of the McCandless Crossing development. That, that does that does sound familiar, and, and there is a portion, a key portion of what's being taken over is the stormwater uh, facilities, and there's actually a large portion that's staying private underneath. There's a very large pipe underneath Providence uh, Boulevard that's staying that's being maintained by the developer out there. Um, so that's uh, that's a little bit different from your normal situation. Only when the town takes it over, it's the, all the stormwater facilities as well. So it's it's kind of a unique situation because of the you know serving multiple properties out there multiple commercial type properties, commercial institutional, and also because of this sort of uh, kind of public-private partnership on the stormwater. Okay, and this is, this is going to go from Babcock all the way to the restaurants up above? Does that go through no, or just it, back um, to the theater? It only, it it, only it, extends about 870, I don't know, five feet or so. Roughly. It, um, it cuts off before from, you enter. So it's really sort of access to that property. Correct. To McCandless Crossing yeah, rather it, it than. It cuts off before you, okay. you get to the McCandless. All right. I know Crossing. someone's going to see this and they're going to ask me this, so I'll feel better being able to answer. Thank you. OK. 
Okay, there's there's a motion and a second. There's motion on the floor with a second. Any public comment about the um, paving program price? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion approved. Item number four. I move to authorize the purchase of the 10-ton dump truck body and central hydraulic system from Stevenson Equipment Incorporated at a purchase price of $84,280 as per CoStar's contract number 025-021. Second. Motion and a second. Are there any comments from council? This is within budget? Yes. No, that was a statement. No. <laughs> this is with a budget. <laughs> Just confirming. Does anyone? It's always that's on. Also, a nice fun thing to say. Anybody else have any comments from council about this about our truck? Comments from citizens. Hearing none. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Item number five. I move to authorize the purchase of a plow and spreader for the 10-ton dump truck from Stevenson Equipment Incorporated at a purchase price of $16,811 as per CoStar's contract number 025-021. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any comment from any council? It is? Within budget. <laughs> <laughs> any other comments? Any comments from any citizens? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there any public comment on the Public Works Committee? Okay, that concludes our report. Okay, service, services Committee? Uh, services Committee, um, as, as many of you may know, uh, Fire Marshal Dan Stack is, is mourning the lot, recent loss of his father, uh, together with all of us, and, and he remains in our prayers. He's not here tonight. Um, in, in his uh, absence, I'd uh, like to ask uh, uh, Manager Grimm to provide the uh, Fire Marshal Report for the month of December 2019 and permit reports for January 2020. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Fire Marshal's report uh, will be forthcoming due to the um, passing of uh, Marshal Stack's father. He had not completed that. And We'll get that to you and we'll get that out and post it publicly for everyone's review. Permit report for the month of January is included in your council packet and was uh, also included in the public packets for your review. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to uh, contact uh, either myself or Mr. Betty. Thank you, Mr. Grimm. Uh, I would just comment on the, in the enforcement violations stats that uh, the town does continue to vigorously enforce its property maintenance codes um, and appreciate that effort. Uh, that concludes my report. Uh, Unless there are any questions. Yes, I'm sorry. I, yes. Have, I have a, a comment. Yes. I noticed uh, in, in our packet that there are a number of complaints about people leaving their trash cans out longer than they should. Is there a chance we could put that on our website, just reminding citizens about there, taking the... There's a number of things related to the trash collection um, that we'll, we'll include that. Okay. As a I just thought... Just some included. reminders every now right. and then. Uh, that's what I that general reminder is needed okay. to Thank make you. sure people are... Are there any other comments or questions from council? Hearing none, any public comments? That concludes my report. Report from the Recreation Committee? There has been no new activity with the Recreation Committee, so I'd like to open up for public comment, please. Any unfinished business? Um, under new business, um, I need to get a little feedback from Council, and that is, do we direct under Public Works, we did not um, commit to directing um, administration to proceed with this uh, process, with this ordinance. The acceptance. The acceptance of this ordinance. Is it okay for us to go ahead? We have to advertise and have a public meeting, and so we, we need to we need to agree. To, we don't have to vote on this. We can Correct. just do a head nod. Right. Is it okay for? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. Yes. All right. Perfect. All right. Good. Um, the other thing I need a head nod on is 
or maybe it will require some more comment, I'm not sure. How does council want to proceed um, as far as um, with regard to the alert request? Madam President, uh, as I indicated, a much more detail, I think, is required on my behalf before I can um, make a decision to even even uh, convene a public hearing on this matter. I don't think that we even have enough information to, to do that. At this I point. agree. I yeah. agree. I, so I agree. do you, are you, are, then are we asking them to put something together <coughs> and then present that? The, Some the, terms? Is that what we're talking about? That's a question, I guess, for uh, Mr. Rob is, um, you know, based on how the law is designed, you know, by us asking for, we want your plans first before we distinguish, determine light, are we putting the chicken before the egg and going, will that harm us down the road by asking them for plans before we make the distinction of light? I don't, I think the answer is yes, and it's because you, a conceptual plan right now you know, may trigger some ideas that, that you might have, but it's not going to commit a developer to doing whatever it is that they put in front of you. So I think what council, if council is going to consider designating a deteriorated area within the town, it should sort of be done independently as to what one person's idea, one property owner's idea might be. It's more of a, more of a holistic, like, all right, you know, we've determined that unless we create some sort of tax, tax incentive over here, that it's not likely to be developed or not likely to be developed to the extent that the town would like it to. So I think that's that's the way to look at this rather than, you know, a, a proposal that may or may not come to fruition uh, because that's all it is. Now, right now, you know, the, the, you can certainly hear someone out if they have ideas in, in that area. I just don't think that should be the basis for your decision one way or another as to whether to pursue the loading. Well, Councilor, Madam President, as I, as I said then, I, I did not see any compelling uh, community good uh, based on, on what I heard tonight. I'm not prepared to, I'm not interested in, in pursuing it with the developer any further to, uh, to grant them tax relief. I, th I think there two, there's two parts to consider in this, following up on, on Mr. Rob's comment. I think the, the council can take into consideration whether or not they want to designate that area as a Lurda that would, or a blighted area um, with the idea that at some point in time could consider incentive. Is this an area we want, we would want to consider incentivizing for the right kind of development? If we get the right kind of development, then the council can consider a, uh, a tax, inc some type of incremental tax abatement. Um, if you don't see that, there's there's no reason to consider it. Um, it's simply a designation at this point. If you wanted to outline an area and create, uh, name that as a blighted area, it's a designation. It doesn't hurt. I, I don't believe the values of the property. Uh, may potentially give some uh, somebody pause to look at it, but I think look at it in two pieces. Do you want to consider that as an area that you may at some point in time want to incentivize development in? If that's the case, then you look at the idea of designating that as a or a blighted area. Then when you're looking at the development itself, any kind of proposed development, that's when you start to get a sense of whether or not any kind of a, an abatement or incentive financially makes sense. Not until then. And I guess I would add too that you know you want to really specify which area you're talking about because you're, yes. you're referring to areas. That, it, there's one area that was presented, but that wouldn't necessarily be you know council could have other areas in mind that would be that would look differently than what was outlined in red. Right, because their original plan was just the upper end. Now they're including the whole thing, Yes. right? I mean, and communities do this in a number of different ways. I mean, you, you outline a specific area. Other communities <coughs> can designate it by zoning district, you know, where there's a larger area that they want to incentivize development. 
there's a number of ways that you can look at this concept, but right now we're only looking at this one specific area. Madam President, may I ask a question? Um, currently, there's an owner for the Rave Cinema site, correct? Correct. Yes. So, and we have property maintenance codes that we could enforce with that owner, correct? Yes. Correct. So I, I would just ask us all to consider that before we designate that area as blighted, to me it's a curious position to say, that, you know, for the owner to be saying, please designate this as blighted so that I can sell the property so that the next person can have a tax incentive to be here. So if, I, I think if there's something we want to address, why not address it now with the current property owner? I agree. Why have we not done that before? Is there a reason? Well, I think one of the, the, the challenges in addition to sort of the <coughs> property falling into disrepair is also the floodplain there, and that's, that's one of the potential factors that, that okay. is taken into account as far as the developability uh, you know, of, of the area. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's no reason that the property owner can't be held accountable for building code and or property maintenance violations on the property. Uh, but blighted does, includes more than just violations. It includes yes. vacant, it includes underutilized. So um, it's more than just yeah. ugly or trash around. So, I mean, I was trying to write down quickly the different terms or the different definitions is associated with blighted. So, um, but any violations they have, they certainly should be held accountable um, to um, complying with those. Um, the other thing too to think about is um, if we decided that we did not want, that it was no public good. I feel that was a great word. There's no public good that would come out of this tax abatement, because that's what it, it is. It is um, mm -hmm. Declaring it blighted, if we so chose to do that, would allow other entities, if they wanted to give them tax abatement, I, I, if they had some kind of um, something worked out with them, it would allow those other entities to do that. That's all we are the only people who can do that. So we could technically, just so you understand, just kind of going on what, what Bob was saying, is that we could say, okay, we declare it blighted if we decided to do that, but we're not giving any tax abatement. So good luck with getting it from the, and that's what they did with McCandless Crossing. They said it's blighted, and then we're not giving you any money, and then they went to the county and they got some tax So we can do it in two sections. That's yes. what Bob that's was trying okay. to say, I okay. think. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's a possibility. We may not want to do anything. We may not want to take the time and the effort to do it because we have to desi we have to change the designation of this area to an economic development district, which is going to take, I don't even know what, to, to do that. So it, it, it is time. It is energy. Um, I think they would pay that. We wouldn't pay that. But... Um, I just want to make sure everybody totally understands what what we're doing uh, or, or not doing. So if we said blighted and we only went that far and didn't go the second section or second part, would the developers be as satisfied or would they not be satisfied because we just said blighted? Well, I think that that would depend on what the governing bodies of the county and the school, you know, the school board, mm. okay. you know, how they would come down on it as to whether or not there's even interest in either of those to give them the same sort of tax relief, which and those are the those are the entities that could really give the significant tax relief. I mean, right. Relative to those two entities, because the millage of the town is so very small. I was just going to say, Bruce had a good comment there, saying you know that our our tax rate is so low that you know it would really be the school. There's not a benefit. Right. Not a huge right. benefit to right. them. Well, Mr. Kirk Brunner pointed out, I thought it was you know interesting as well, is that this is a property, at least the one specifically that these developers are developing, that's been now twice, uh, so there's been significant investment. Someone willing to step up and, and put a lot of money into developing the property without any sort of incentive. So Well, they brought us a plan without asking <coughs> for, for this. It, it's I mean, we, it seems unusual. Usually this is what we offer to get people to come to a place. Right, right, but they yes. we, we already yeah, voted is, on that. Yeah, this is a conversation on. that should have taken place a year ago. Because then there would have been an opportunity to derive a public good. Right now, it simply goes into the developer's pockets. Yes. I'm sorry. That's how I feel about it. I'll just say, rather than waste time. Okay. Um, yeah. um, so I, like so I, I want to look yeah. at, um, yeah. thank you. I want to look at, uh, I want nods of 
do we want to just let this go um, or do we want to um, try to move forward with some type of plan? What are, we, what are we thinking? Let it go, move forward, what are we? I'd, I'd be interested to see if interest changes once um, you know, ground is broken for the development that's already been approved, if that is encouraging to other developers if they see something happening that they want to be next to. So you're saying you don't really think if we want to give it alert and this is the time let the to market, wait on that let you're the saying market wait. Dictate. Yes. Yeah. Market. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's a wait. Wait. I agree with Councilman Clune and, and additionally I think we need to do something at the Rave Cinema site. It's an eyesore. Something needs to change there. And I wouldn't want us to overlook the fact that that piece of property could really be used for um, some help with the stormwater that we're having problems with on Blazer Drive. So something different needs to happen there. But as far as making the entire area alert a district right now, uh, no, I don't think that that's necessary. Well, and that also, just to add on to that part, so that northern piece of property, I know Bruce has told us in the past, you cannot build on it because there's so much red, red clay in there. So no matter what we do to that piece, it's not, I actually have, I've met the owners in the past and they said they want that to be green space. Um, that that's what they bought it to and they've intended it for and that's what it is. So all because it's green space does not mean it's blighted. So that portion would not be like even related to this. Okay. All right. So I'll just ask, uh, that's four, but I'll just ask, um, are you guys with waiting? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 yes. All right. Okay. Then, then we'll take no further action on this okay. and um, we're done. Um, is there any other new business? I, I just want to um, take a moment and compliment the Environmental um, activity, you know, Action Committee and um, Councilperson Woods for the program that was put on here last week. Uh, as Mr. Kirk said, standing room only, fantastic program. Um, definitely a need and interest from our residents and our neighboring communities for further discussion on this topic. And I, I hope that McCandless leads the way in that sort of discussion. The speaker series from the EAC has been a huge success. And um, uh, it's really catching on. People are really paying attention. And um, please look forward to uh, the additional um, speakers that are coming in the future. Any, anyone else? Okay. Uh, public comment, uh, unrelated agenda items. Steve Mertz, 180 Ridge. I just wanted to remind you again, uh, over a year ago we started discussing uh, for about a half an hour, uh, plastic and glass recycled roads. We've been told they last considerably longer. We were supposed to do it last year, never did. Start looking into it before we get overwhelmed uh, in the budget process next year. And uh, I'm also wondering about how much longer before we start talking about the chickens and ducks and bees again. The spring's coming. It, was, it, it is uh, in the dogs and ducks, I'm calling it the dogs and ducks subcommittee right still. And as soon as they get through shaking it out, it's going to go to planning and then it's coming to council. Okay, it's it, been it, it is four uh, years that we started talking about this. And uh, it seems like this is one of the simplest things we could be doing. It is so contentious. Yeah. Getting old. A lot of people <laughs> waiting for it. Any other public comment? Okay, thank you. Hi, Barbara Richards, um, Manor Court. Um, this is this is going back to the um, the Blazer Drive thing, but just I'd like to just say that I hope that there is a lot of research done and that everybody remembers what really happened down there when um, the Rave property was um, offered up to the town for purchase, and I believe that. Um, uh, Kim and um, Mrs. Powers were the only ones that were on the council at the time, but it was found to be contaminated, I believe, when environmental studies of soil things were done. And it was that reason that it was not turned into a, um, a, a green space or a park, I think, is what they wanted to turn it into. So please, as you move forward with that, don't forget all parts of that property, that it was once, it is contaminated just a flight thing. Whoever um, buys that property, if they peel off that layer, they're responsible for mediating it. So whoever, if whoever develops it, whoever does, they will be responsible for, for mediating it. 
absolutely. Okay, well, it was believed to be also, it was during the Walmart thing, and um, it was believed that uh, that property was then going to contain a, re um, a retention pond that would benefit the land where Walmart was going to be built, which I think you're, is, is already a done deal or something like that. But um, I wonder if there's any connection now. Why did Walmart need that property to build a retention pond then, but nobody needs it now? So I'm just wondering that's something that really needs to be re-looked at. I really yeah. think it's a difference in the type of development. You know, Walmart has a huge parking lot, huge footprint for the uh, building. That makes where, sense, yeah. Where the proposed development uh, that is going in place has the more senior, green the space senior. and forty percent green yes. space. So it's the one going significant in. difference compared to the. But I think there's flooding the problems also where the um, the senior housing will be uh, is going to go. Not no, that's not up on that further. section. It's it's okay. more down toward the Port Authority okay. property and the Ray property. Okay, that's, that's not the way I understood it years ago. I thought it was between that. You know, valleys and the road behind it, there is the flood area back there. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Any other um, citizen comment? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any adjourned?